2008, the Pentagon accused Iran of threatening the U.S. Fifth Fleet, but this was later contradicted by the Navy, Admiral Fox Fallon, the head of CENTCOM, who then resigned, refusing to attack Iran. According to Press TV, a naval officer had literally given the order to fire on the Iranian ships. Vice Admiral Kevin J. Cosgriff, commander of the Fifth Fleet, said the U.S. ships received a radio call that was threatening in nature to the effect that they were closing on our ships and going to attack and that U.S. ships would, quote, explode. Iran characterized the radio communications as a standard transmission uh, between ships and went on to say that they did not uh, put out that transmission. Later, our media claimed it was some type of radio prankster doing it. Uh, yeah, called the... Called the uh, CIA. It goes on on January on on July eighth, two thousand and eight, a mid-level uh, clerical aide to Iran's supreme leader Ayatollah Al Khamenei said the U.S. shipping in the Persian Gulf will be Iran's first targets, uh, and they will be burned if there is an attack on Iran. It goes on in July of '08, Pulitzer Prize-winning journalist Seymour Hersh told an audience at the campus. Uh, progress journalism conference at the Bush administration officials held a meeting with Dick Cheney's office to discuss ways to provoke war with Iran. There was a dozen ideas proffered about how to trigger a war. There was one that interested uh, me most, uh, and this is a quote, was why don't we build in our own shipyard, build four or five boats that look like Iranian PT boats, put Navy SEALs on them, with a lot of arms, and next time one of the boats goes in the Strait of Hormuz, start a shoot-up, said Hirsch, quoting Cheney. And uh, now Japan is announcing that their biggest oil tanker line, the second biggest in the world, but the biggest for Japan, uh, has been attacked, and they believe it was some type of terror attack, an explosion up against the side of the boat, blowing out a bulkhead and damaging some life rafts. Uh, so this is a very, very serious information, and this boil down story by Kurt Nemo is vital to get out to everyone uh, ahead of the media now starting to latch on to this and promote the fact that Iran has attacked a ship in the Strait of Hormuz. Uh, very, very uh, serious uh, developments on that front. Continuing. Israeli defense chief offers warnings on Iran and Lebanon. So this echoes what Ahmed Dinejid saying about two Middle Eastern countries to be attacked. For my intel, I believe it's going to be Iran and Syria, perhaps Lebanon as well, maybe even Gaza. This is out of the Washington Post. Israeli defense chief offers warning on Iran and Lebanon. Israeli defense chief Ehud Barak is due to arrive in Washington, bearing two warnings for American policymakers. Sanctions won't thwart Iran's push for nuclear weapons, and Israel will strike directly at Lebanese government institutions if Hezbollah launches rockets at Israel towns. In a wide-ranging interview, Barack, who has become one of Israel's most frequent official guests in Washington, outlined his vision for arresting Iran's nuclear drive, uh, coping with Hezbollah threat, and forging a deal with the Palestinians. And uh, he goes on to warn those countries that they may strike them sooner rather than later. Meanwhile, continuing to look at the Middle East, Russians say war with Iran is completely unacceptable. Dmitry Babich, Russia's uh, profile magazine, has given an interview saying a war in Iran is absolutely unacceptable for Russia, and Russia will do everything to prevent that possibility on the other hand, Russia is also afraid of Iran getting close to acquiring nuclear weapons. So a hedged bet there via uh, statements by Russian government officials. Iran has gone, gone on in their official press TV organ, uh, press blowhorn, to say Iran's independent of world powers. Iran's president, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, said the Islamic Republic has gained independence withdrawing itself from the circle of influence of economic powers. And he went on to say they're preparing to be attacked by the United States and or Israel. Both uh, press TV is also reporting something that I know to be true because Bush four years ago had the White House put out a press release reporting what Cy Hirsch and others had said several years before that, that thousands off and on of U.S. Special Forces Arabic speaking, are all over Iran staging terror attacks against military and police installations, dams, schools, 
trying to elicit a response by Iran inside Iraq, coming across the border there, just punching him in the nose, slapping him in the face, rubbing it in, trying to get them to respond so World War III can be launched. And here's the press TV headline, U.S. funds sedition leaders to topple Iran. A top Islamic cleric says the U.S. has given the leaders of sedition $1 billion in order to topple the Islamic establishment during last year's post-election unrest. Well, yeah, that's been done twice in the last eight years. I have acquired documents showing the Americans paid $1 billion to leaders of sedition through Saudi individuals, the arch enemy of Iran. They're Sunni. Iran Shiite. That's why it's so asinine to say Iran is funding Al Qaeda when Al Qaeda is CIA and out of Saudi Arabia. It's the opposite. It's it's Sunni, not Shiite. Iran is Shiite. Shiite and Sunnis hate each other more than they hate the West. I mean, do you understand that? I have acquired documents showing that Americans paid one billion dollars to leaders of sedition through Saudi Arabian individuals who are currently the U.S. agents in regional countries. The I. LNA quoted head of the Guardian Council, Ayatollah Ahmed Janadi, as saying yesterday, these Saudis who spoke on behalf of the U.S. told the opposition figures that if you can't overthrow the Islamic establishment, we would pay another $50 billion, he added. The opposition leaders staged riots with the help of the U.S., and they were confident that the Islamic Revolution would fail with the assistance of the U.S. because it is soft war, which causes people to break away from the Islamic system, he explained. The Iranian cleric further pointed out the system which does not enjoy the support of the nation will collapse automatically. Ayatollah Janadi said Saudi Arabia is obeying the U.S. in a servile manner and added that Iran is the only country which stood by itself and chanted death to America with strength. You know, these, these Ayatollahs on record were put into power against the Shah. There was a arms for hostages deal. It was a way to double-cross Jimmy Carter. And that's all been declassified. It was all staged. So I don't trust these guys any more than I trust the globalists that run our country. And they play into this paradigm of death to America. Death to America? America's been seized by the very banks that ran your country until 53. And then re-overthrew it for that brief time after 53. And so death to America? It's the globalists that are killing the United States. Nevertheless... Either way you slice it, dice it, any, any angle you look at this, you can see World War III being prepared. You can see global crises, financial, economic, military, cultural, all being triggered. The dominoes are now in motion. And all of us have to realize that world government is being formed. A new planetary bank that you pay your carbon taxes to, that controls your domestic government, Every major nation from Greece to the United States that's fallen to these bankers is passing or has passed legislation to give the banking cartel that created the trillions and derivatives total power over the economy. And they need to start a war as a political smokescreen to complete their takeover. The good news is people are starting to wake up to this, but not fast enough. And so these are the times that try men and women's souls. The quickening is here. The acceleration is upon us. You're going to see staged terror attacks to be blamed on domestic groups. You're going to see staged terror attacks to be blamed on foreign governments. That's now inevitable. If we cause a giant awakening, the globalists may back off. But at this time, they have engaged. The clock is ticking. The time bomb is ticking. And just strap yourselves in, ladies and gentlemen, because you're about to see massive changes. Gulf War vets, 9-11 workers, people around the Gulf oil spill fumes, all were exposed to toxic chemicals in the air and became ill. Even in your home, air contamination can make you sick. You have been exposed to airborne toxic particulate matter and volatile organic compounds causing fatigue, flu-like symptoms, or worse. Protect yourself. You cannot trust anyone to do it for you. Clean the air in your home or workplace with a HealthMate Plus air purifier. Call airfiltersandpurifiers.com for answers on how to purify the air you breathe. 
Contact airfiltersandpurifiers.com and ask about the HealthMate Plus. The HealthMate Plus is capable of trapping 99.97% of all polluting particulates. Buy the HealthMate Plus today with no tax, free shipping, a five-year warranty, and a 30-day money-back guarantee. Go to airfiltersandpurifiers.com. GCN listeners get a 5% discount by using promo code GCN. Call 800-499-2418 or go to airfiltersandpurifiers.com. Your trusted advisor for clean air. The economy is crumbling, debt soaring, and the possibility of World War III is increasing. I started SurvivalistSeeds.com from my dining room table with a small bucket of seed and a single rotating banner ad on PrisonPlanet.com. Two years later, we've sold over 40,000 pounds of heirloom seeds, becoming the largest bulk seed seller to the public. The majority of our customers are Alex Jones listeners. Now I'm offering 50 all organic garden varieties, 10,000 heirloom seeds, garden planner, and a CD teaching you how to save seeds so your children's children will always have healthy food. Don't wait until it's too late. I'm Big John Lipscomb, and my company is Survivalist Seeds. 